Hi, Thomas the Hermit here, and I'm in my car. It is about 3 o'clock in the morning. It is raining outside. And as I've been sitting here, uh, I kind of like, sometimes wake up at this time of night. And as I'm sitting here, I'm beginning to reflect on the things that God has been doing to me. I've also been reading um, from my phone. I've downloaded into my phone the um, Life of Teresa of, of Jesus. Um, that, of course, is the biography of Teresa of Avila. And I've been kind of reflecting on the things that God has been doing to me. Now, I put out a video about my experience with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and overcoming it using Buddhist meditation. And in that video, you can see how whacked out I was in the morning. Well, um, I also said to the viewers, I'm going to keep an open book as to the things that are happening. Now, I think this is important because we don't want to have any, um, any um, phony or over-glossed pictures of what is going on. We want to have a real picture. And I'm, going, I'm trying to give a real picture as to what is happening to me and happening in my life. I'm stuck in my car. It's raining outside. It's been raining for several days. Uh, part of the effects of the hurricane that's been hitting us. And I know I'm in Waco, Texas, and we're getting this, this terrible weather because of the hurricane. Even though Waco is, is much deeper into Texas uh, than, let, than Corpus Christi or even San Antonio. I can't explain it, but the fact is we're beginning this terrible rain. Um, I do not know how much it is flooding. We even got a tornado the other day. Um, now, the it has been raining, and I have this leak over here, so I, I actually put a tarp, uh, or not the tarp, but the drop cloth over part of the truck to keep the water out. Now, and I'm kind of stuck here because it's cold. If you get cold and wet, it's kind of dangerous. I don't mind getting wet. Um, in the summer or when it's warm, but cold and wet is a little more dangerous, and I really do not have a poncho or anything like that. As I'm in here and as I've been, you know, kind of isolated, I've been reflecting upon the blessings of God, how good God is, um, how beautiful God is, how loving God is. Now, these are the experiences that I've been having in prayer. And believe it or not, the experiences have been increasing as the, um, as the, the suffering has been increasing. So the more, the more difficult my life becomes, the more God is present, the more he, is, he has been blessing me with his presence or becoming more intimate with me. And that is quite extraordinary. And I have to be honest with you, it doesn't make me feel like, like I'm special because it actually makes me feel like I'm a wretched, wretched person. Because the closer God gets to me, the more wretched or the more sinful or the more broken that I feel. Now, that doesn't mean I'm feeling depressed. The opposite, I'm feeling very, very wonderful, so loved, so blessed, you know. This experience of God is quite extraordinary. And that's kind of why I know that I have kind of arrived into that mystical theology that uh, Teresa of Avila, the prayer of quiet, infused contemplation, and it's kind of hard to map, and I don't think that we're supposed to be mapping accurately. You know, oh, I'm at this particular spot, you know. Um, but I have to say that the experience isn't anything that I thought looking back. Looking back when I was reading her works before, because I've read them several times, I've always thought, wow, I'll never get to anything like that. But it's not true. I have gotten to somewhere 
in that mystical contemplation, in that effused contemplation, that experience of God that is beyond anything this world has to offer. And I can't stress that enough. The world has nothing on this. This is quite extraordinary. This is well worth it. This makes suffering look like nothing. And you used to think, oh, the suffering of the saints, you know. Oh, well, they're, they're superhuman beings. I don't think so. You know, how could they be superhuman beings if Jesus Christ is carrying 90% of the load? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a little bit troublesome. It's kind of bothersome. Even Teresa says that, you know, the sufferings are kind of like flies, you know. It's not really that heavy in the light of God's love. I, I really can't explain it. And you read Teresa and she's sitting there going, oh, I'm such a wretched, terrible sinner. And we're going, come on, Teresa, you know, you're a holy woman. You're a saint. You're not a terrible sinner. You know what? <laughs> she was. <laughs> We all are. She was a terrible sinner, and so are you. But don't despair, because God is so extraordinarily loving and beautiful and merciful. You know, praise be to God, you could be a terrible sinner, and he can bless the socks off of you. I don't know if I can get through to you, you know, and praise be to God, if a person like me can, can have this experience of God, so can you. So can you. You know, I'm trying to chronicle, you know, my life in, in, the, in the thing of my four-year fight with the devil. My life has been one broken mess after another. If I can get here, then so can others. Now, I'm not speaking off the top of my head here. It just so happens that that was the belief of Teresa of Avila. She believed that this kind of prayer was accessible to everyone. If they were willing to do the work, to lay the foundation, to do the things that were necessary, that they too could experience this infused contemplation. This is Thomas the Hermit singing of the blessings of God. God is great. God is beautiful. God is more awesome than anything in this world. And he is worth turning your back on the world. He is worth turning your back on power, money, prestige, sex, who cares? You know, that's another story. The overcoming of uh, sexual addiction and being free to be a child of God. I want to be a child of God. I don't want, want to be a child of the world. Anyways, say a prayer for me. I am praying for you. I'll talk to you later.